The Media Browser is new to Audition CS6, and it is yet another way to bring files into Audition. And you may be asking yourself, whoa, another way to bring files in in addition to open, import, append, and insert into multi-track session, there's another way to bring files in? Well, yeah, this is a kind of a jack of all trades, and it does have some advantages over those other methods. So let me just run through some of its features. First, you can get quick access to folders via shortcuts. Click on a shortcut and boom, you're right in a folder. Next, you can view file data that you can't necessarily see in the import or the open dialog box, and that includes sample rate, bit depth, and channels. You can play the audio and listen to it before you bring it into Audition. And finally, you're able to import, open, or insert files into multi-track sessions from this one panel. So it does have some interesting features. Let's go take a look at it. Now, the Media Browser is down here in the lower left-hand corner in the default workspace. If you don't see it here, it might be one of these buttons, so click on one of these tabs and see if that opens it up. And if you don't see it that way, just go to Window Media Browser. Here we are in the Media Browser, and because of the resolution we're using here, it's kind of scrunched up. So I'm going to start expanding it to the right a little bit to show you more of it. So as I expand to the right, you'll see some icons pop up, including this little back arrow that goes back one level, whatever your previous level was. And then there's a little plus button that adds shortcuts. And then here's something that I've never seen before in an interface. It's kind of cool little icon pops up and you think, okay, it's an icon and it's got a little drop down list where you can see all supported media or all files, that's fine. But if I drag farther, that icon turns into a drop down list with a thing with filter in front of it. So it's the exact same thing. It just uses this longer description. I kind of like that. It's like if you have your thing in too tight like that, you still have the functionality that you would have if you pulled it farther wide. I'm gonna leave it like this just as kind of a reminder that this little guy is a dual appearance, depending on how far you pull it to the right. Okay, let's talk about navigating inside the media browser. On the left-hand side, it shows all the drives on your computer. And if we want to find, let's say, the working files, I go to Main Drive, Infinite Skills, Audition, and down here, oh, I can't see it. Let's go a little bit to the right, like that. There's Working Files. And here are the five folders inside the Working Files folder. And if I navigate that way on the left-hand side here, then this drop-down list shows me all the levels that I've gone through, starting with the main drive and one level down, one level down, drilling down to working files. Now, if I do it a different way, if I go, let's say, back to the main drive this way, and then navigate on this side, that, that, and like that, it doesn't have all those little guys listed here. This thing shows whatever you've done on this side as opposed to this side, just to be aware of that. So I'm gonna go this way and hear those guys show up again. So let's go open up a multi-track session. So I'm gonna drop down this and here's the multi-track session I created for this tutorial, 0404 browser. If I just double click it, that'll open it up. That'll bring all the files up into the files panel and open them up in the multi-track session. I can do that, but if I drag it up to the files panel, it just imports it. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go File, Close All, and now I'm going to show you what happens if I double click. So double clicking is open. Dragging is import. Kind of interesting that it gives you those options. Let me back up a bit. I'm going to bring in a file that I want to add to the multi-track session. We'll do it in a couple of ways. I'm going to go to Music, just to our define. I want to add, let's say, the second vocal here, Vocal 2. Now, if I double click it, you should know that that's going to open it. It opens it up here as a file and it brings it over here into the files panel. It does not add it to the multi track session, it just opens it so we can look at it. Let's say if I want to add it to the multi track session, I can do it using the insert command as if I was using the multi track insert files command. So let me go down here and go, let's say, to the baritone. And I want to take a look at the multi track session when I do this so you can see what's going on. You don't have to do it this way, but I want to show you what's going on. I want to add it to the multi-track session. I've got the current time indicator at the beginning. Here's an open track. If I just right-click on this, just right-click on it and say, insert in the multi-track and select the open multi-track session, it'll add it right there in that open track. Let's say I want to add the second one now. Now here, there's no open track. But remember, if you've got the current time indicator at the beginning, and even if you have a track selected, it'll make its own track. It won't cover up something, it won't replace something in the multi-track session. So I right-click. Insert in the multi-track browser, and it adds a track, track number seven, and puts it there. It does have this little anomaly of making track seven ahead of track six, which may be a bug at this point in the beta process, or it may end up being in the shipping version. I'm not clear on that, but just so you be aware, 
it might do that in your shipping version or it might be reversed. So seven might be down below six where you'd think it would go. So let's check out some other features here. I'm gonna to go to a different folder. I'm gonna to go to the demo files and I want to preview it, which is a kind of a cool feature. So I'm gonna just pick on this little guy over here. Let me expand the view a little bit so you can see the length a little better. I'm gonna just click on this guy and click play. There you go. So you can preview things just by selecting them and clicking on the play button. And we'll just try one more here. Just to. Okay. And if you want to loop something, you click on the loop playback and that just activates loop. It doesn't actually loop anything until you tell it to start playing. So if I click on this four second vibraphone note here, it'll loop. It'll play when I click play. And then when it gets to four seconds, you can see the seconds going by here. It'll play again like that. Then when you want to stop looping, you just turn that off. Then there's a feature called autoplay. If you click on that, nothing will happen. But when you click on a file now, it'll play immediately. Just too hard, just too hard. And if you change the file to something else, and turn it off that way. So the little loop playback and the autoplay don't start anything until you click on something. But then once you click on something, off they go and it'll loop or start playing, and then you can always turn it off down here. So that's how you preview it. If you scroll this to the right, you'll see all the data that goes along with all the files, the duration, that it's an audio file, how many samples there are, whether it's stereo mono or 5.1, the bit depth, what kind of file it is, and where it's stored on the hard drive. Now, there's one other thing here. Notice this is a MTS file. This is a video file. If you look to the right, there's no information about it. Now, we've already turned on the DLMS, the Dynamic Link Media Server, so we're able to access files and bring in files that would normally not open in Audition, but would open in Premiere Pro. So if I were to double click this, it would open, but right now it's not showing information. That's because the preferences haven't been set to display a preview inside the media browser. So I'm gonna to go to Edit Preferences and go to Media and Disk Cache. And here's the dynamic link media. It's enabled, so I could bring that file in, no problem, but I don't have the preview in the media browser. That's because it kind of slows things down a little bit. I'm gonna click it now, click OK. And now, if I look at that file again, there it is, and now information is to the right of it. It's an audio video file, stereo, and it's an MPEG kind of file, internally MPEG, and it says, what the video source format is. It's high definition, which is good to know all these things. And that all shows up here now. And it, it will preview, if I select it, it'll preview the audio. They have an audio they have unusual thing. It just has some voices on that particular file on that one audio track, which is just a left audio track. If you heard it in your left ear or your left speaker, that's because it's a two track file. One is silent, the other one has some audio in it. So that's how you can preview things here inside the media browser. And now I want to talk about shortcuts. Let me back up a little bit here, close this guy down. You can add shortcuts. I can click on a folder and click on this little plus button and say add a shortcut. Now it says for working files because whatever folder is active out here will show up at the top of this list and whatever folders are active here show up as the sort of generic selected folders. If I click that, that'll add a shortcut. You're going, well, where the heck is a shortcut? Well, it's down here. I've got to open it up that way and there it appears here. So now this is shortcuts. Let's say I'm back here at the main drive, and then there's a shortcut here, I go bam. We get right to the internal part of that folder, not to the folder itself, but to the guts of the folder, all the files inside it. And if I click this button now, it shows that shortcut is in this list now. Let me show you one more thing. If I go, let's say, back up a notch, here we go. We can go to Infinite Skills, go back to Audition, go back to Working Files. And now if I look inside these guys here, if I, if I pick, let's say, Demo Files and Control or Command Click, Control and Windows, Command and Mac, the other guys, these other four, and then go add those, it'll add them for all four of them. Here they are right over here on the left-hand side, and here they are in this drop-down list. It's great because you get right to these guys and right to all the files inside them as you click through here. And at some point you may think, okay, I've used these shortcuts, I've used them in my session, I don't need them anymore because the next thing I work on will not incorporate these guys, you can select one and then go up here and say, remove the shortcut for demo files. So that's the way you can get rid of a shortcut and that goes right away. 
Finally, I do want to point out the functionality of this little guy over here, the filter contents. This way it says all supported media, meaning every single kind of file that you can work with in Audition will show up. If you click on all files, then it shows everything, including let's say text files, document files, HTML files, whatever. And typically you don't want to see all files, but sometimes you want to see everything inside a folder, so you would click that. But most of the time I go for the default here and say all supported media, which is what I'm doing. When I'm working on Audition, I want to see the kind of files that I can work with in Audition. So that's an overview of the media browser. As a reminder, you can import, open, and insert into multi-track session here, all from one panel, which is kind of an advantage. Plus you have all these great shortcuts that let you get immediate access to the folders on your hard drive.